More than 4 billion people live across this vast continent called Asia. And we are telling their stories. On this edition, bubble milk tea, also known as boba tea, originating in Taiwan, but taking the world by storm. And an ancient maritime tradition that's being revived and even celebrated. I'm Barnaby Lowe, and this is Assignment Asia. Welcome to the program. How many of these people around me do you think love drinking bubble milk tea? At least a handful, yes? Judging by how much the drink has evolved and how it's become so commonly available in many cities around the world, I'd say that's not a stretch. This is especially true in Taiwan, the land of bubble milk tea. Pearl milk tea. Tapioca tea. Boba. Bubble tea. Call it what you want, but it's the same sweetened, tea-based drink with chewy little pearls that has taken the world by storm. They've also evolved into different varieties. There's tea without the milk, milk and sugar without tea, brown sugar, fruit flavor. The list goes on. There are even options. Sugar, no sugar, some sugar, more ice, some ice, no ice. To cater to different needs, preferences, and taste buds. There's no doubt it's popular, but in Taiwan, it's as ubiquitous as, say, coffee is in Europe. And why not? The culture of drinking tea with milk may be a centuries-old practice elsewhere. And iced tea may have been popularized by Americans. But bubble tea, let's call it that from here on, is a Taiwan concoction, without a doubt. But even the most avid bubble tea lovers may have a hard time guessing exactly where and who started the revolution. So pearl milk tea wasn't invented in some laboratory or factory. It was actually invented in this shop back in 1986. And as you can see, business is still really good. And inside, interestingly, it looks a little like a museum. <laughs> you have to go all the way to the end of the restaurant to check it out. Yes, it's a restaurant and not your run-of-the-mill takeaway bubble tea shop. These panels reveal not only factoids and trivia, but a story. The story of Chun Shui Kang and a bubble tea that many of us have come to love, that some of us can't do without. Uh, and by all appearances, Chun Shui Tang, now with outlets all over Taiwan and beyond, is making money. 
but money is never the sole motivation of the people behind it. They were passionate about their products. The owner, Liu Hanjie, is considered a tea expert. The manager, Lin Xiuhui, well, let's just say she's every bubble tea lover's godmother. It turns out tapioca was a childhood favorite of hers. Back in the day, it was merely considered a local delicacy. Now 我也爱喝奶茶啦there was consensus within Lin Xiuhui's circle. The combination of milk tea and tapioca pearls was good. But she wanted further affirmation. So so for a milk tea lover, and I know there are a lot of us, it's very exciting to be able to taste the original bubble milk tea. And so I asked how to properly enjoy your bubble milk tea. And I was told you had to stir, stir it a little bit so that when you drink it, you're also able to get the chewy pearls underneath. And I think what's special about this is that right combination of the taste of tea and milk. It took very little effort to convince her tea-loving boss, of course. And so not long after her discovery, Chun Shui Tang began to officially offer bubble tea on its menu. And then neighboring stores followed suit. By the 1990s, bubble tea was as common in Taiwan as McDonald's was in any major city. And now, good luck finding a bubble tea place without long lines. How do you feel that it's now a worldwide sensation? It, you know, from east to west, everybody loves bubble milk tea. Very good. Because as bubble tea was rising in popularity, however, so was the use of plastic straws. I guess in terms of using plastic straws, Taiwan is a big user of plastic straws. Is this because of the milk tea culture? Uh, it's a, 
低价格是免费的，所以任何的便利商店它都可以拿得到。那这个造成的污染就很大。朱学杰 ，who aptly goes by the nickname Ocean, is a lifelong environmentalist. After years of advocacy, however, he felt his message wasn't coming across as effectively as he would have liked. He felt he needed to offer a more tangible solution. I was in 2013, because we felt if we didn't have something that people could see it and then let them change their lives, then actually environmental is very difficult. So in 2013, we started the production of this environmental seal. 在台湾，而且是首创生产，然后也在台湾，就是直接先从台湾开始推广，然后慢慢的推广到很多国家。因为这个我有摆在店面前售卖的，然后、啊、For small entrepreneur like Ocean, it was a gamble. 为什么他那个不见了？然后就发现他其实。QC, which is what he named his new eco-friendly company, required a sizable investment. They weren't just going to sell glass and metal straws. They were going to manufacture them as well. Uh, 刚出来推广的第一年，其实呢，生意其实是非常非常的不好。嗯，那我必须要去跑全台湾的市集跟展览的活动。那其实，在第二年、第三年的时候，其实我们推动的效果已经非常大了。嗯，已经有非常非常，应该至少有好几十万人。他已经有用环保吸管了。All right, here comes my milk tea. 谢谢。You know,、um, when this restaurant opened two years ago, the owners made a conscious decision to only use glass and metal straws. But pretty soon. The entire island of Taiwan, all restaurants in the entire island of Taiwan, will have to use non-plastic straws, and this is especially true for milk tea. As you know, Taiwan is the world's milk tea capital. As many as 8.3 billion plastic straws end up on the world's beaches, according to a recent study by Australian scientists. Taiwan consumes around three billion of them each year. The island's ban on plastic straws started in July 2019, but is limited to dine-in settings for now. Taiwan is actually known for its efficient waste segregation and disposal system, but there has been some controversy over new regulations on plastic straws. Once the ban extends to takeaways and deliveries, the question for many becomes: How do you drink your bubble tea? Ocean says it's just a matter of changing lifestyles. Glass and metal straws are available everywhere. First is free, free and easy. Second is that they now people are just for convenience. They like it easy. Easy is very important. But to change, it needs to be easier. But but easy is easy. 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 去看医生，其实它是不好的。The ban on plastic straws wasn't in effect yet when we visited Chun Shui Han, but they did have metal straws available for those who prefer to use them. 你看那个珍珠的 Q2 特别的好，你有喝到茶？ I have to admit, even as someone who's c o n c I didn't ask for a reusable straw. It does take some getting used to, but it's possible, even in the world of bubble tea lovers. A ban on the use of plastic straws is a small step towards protecting our planet, but with the amount of bubble tea we consume on a daily basis, 
A collective effort to resist the use of plastic straws sure sounds like a step in the right direction. Next, on the Simon Asia, teaching and imparting a passion for sailing. Stories of hope, triumph, innovation, and change. We uncover the truth and go great lengths to tell a story. Get to know ordinary people with extraordinary stories and see Asia from an Asian perspective. This is Assignment Asia. Expect the unexpected. In the Philippines, the Balangay is a type of plank boat that's also known as the oldest watercraft found in the country. Apart from showcasing ancient craftsmanship, it also highlights the seafaring skills of Filipinos, especially during the pre-colonial times. Cheryl Bandicantos traveled to Butuan City in Mindanao to find out what's being done to teach ancient boat building and sailing techniques to the younger generation. Sailing is just a sport also siya, pero iba ang feeling. Like, kung baga, makapagaan bitaw siya, makaparelax. Like, mabilin bitaw ang imong problema nga naa sa land. Kay kung tuwa mong gutya dito sa sail, you only focus ko sa boat, the wind, then sa current sa water. On Weather Perfect Weekends, you can find Renz Ramasasa sailing across the open sea on a dinghy. The thousands of islands in the Philippines and the proximity of the sea have dictated the lives of millions of Filipinos. Growing up near the coast, Renz always had an affinity with water. He used to live in the province of Leyte near the shore. His stepfather was a fisherman. Among others, Renz's family of 10 relied on fishing to make ends meet until Super Typhoon Haiyan came. Renz and his siblings were able to evacuate while their mother was too weak to go because she had just given birth to their new brother. Nagsige ko gingon ni Uncle nga, Kul sila mama din to, kul anak ko. Sila mama on sahi ko na to. Nga na si Uncle nga, dili na na ako makayagad to dito kay lagi kusog na din. Katong storm surge nga mga kuanjod, ako na kusog kay sog. Nga mo din sa babaw, nakita na mga mong sityo. Wala na ibalay na bilin, tapos mga puno, like maihap na lang ang nagtindog, ang uban putol na. So, pagkagabi eh, dito na ako nakita na akong stepfather, naghilak na siya. Dito na siya ningon nga, wala na si mama daw. The super typhoon was so strong, it destroyed entire towns and claimed lives by the thousands. Renz had to start anew. Spurred by his dream of becoming a seafarer, he decided to go to the city of Butuan, Agusan del Norte, a city with deep maritime roots. This is where some of the oldest boats in the Philippines have been found. Then, at that time, I was in doubt if I could apply to any or daily. Seafaring, of course, is expensive, but I was able to do it. Sa una, gusto na ako mag-seferer ana, pero sa ako nga side, pero dili na ako na makaya, so ako sang gisita side na lang kay, syempre, stepfather na ako si man, ang gungi po yan dito, mandaragat yun, so, sir, makumaadap ko ni mo. Kaya ito nga tayo nag-campaign, ano ako, itry na ako ni, basing dahi mauna ni. The course did not just teach him how to sail, it taught him what it mean to be a Filipino sailor with a vibrant heritage going back to pre-colonial times. After all, he was in Butuan, the place where the Balangai, a large traditional boat that early Filipinos used to navigate the seas, had been dug up. The Balangai is so important to Butuan's history that every year a festival is held to celebrate the preservation of these ancient boats. We call it ancient uh, Butuan boat. The Balangay symbolizes our uh, unit government. Uh, we are made up of archipelago and people travel by boat. These boats cannot just be small boats, but 
they are also large enough to accommodate families. So this has become a symbol of a unit family in our country. We have historical uh, accounts of the King of Butuan sending the first mission to China, to the emperor. Imagine the King of Butuan going to China to negotiate for better trade relations. In 1976, during the excavation of drainage canals for the Butuan River, countless artefacts and key Balangai specimens were also unearthed. When the Spanish arrived in the Philippines in the 1500s, they wrote about how Filipino seafarers were far superior in the sea in terms of skills, in terms of navigation, and even their vessels. There was a quote from the accounts of Pigafetta wherein they wrote about boats that would sail like flying birds, wherein the, it would, he would compare the galleons of the Spanish to boats made of lead because the Filipino vessels uh, some as large or even larger than the Spanish boats were very swift in the water, were very fast, were far superior in, in performance to the Spanish. An Italian scholar and explorer, Antonio Pigafitta, joined the expedition led by the Portuguese explorer Ferdinand Magellan under the reign of King Charles I of Spain. In 2018, the Balang Ai was featured in a biennial China sea race. Three replicas of the ancient boats sailed from Manila Bay to Qianzhou in China's Fujian province to commemorate the voyage of the Filipinos to the Ming Emperor 600 years ago. Patrick Ruiz, Renz's sailing coach in school, was part of the China-bound crew. Uh, the goal of the Balangay voyage uh, was to retrace the ancient uh, maritime routes of our ancestors because based on the history records, the Balangays were used to cross from Sulu or from the Philippines to China to trade. And by doing that, we made the exact replica of the Balangay boat and we sailed it also just to try or to really test the boat if it's really seaworthy. And the experience was really quite unique. It's like going back in the past. Reviving the lost sailing culture involves more than just staging large maritime events. It also includes teaching ancient boat building and sailing techniques to the younger generation, such as Renz. We started this endeavor uh, more than a year ago when we were thinking of ways how to preserve the ancient maritime culture of the Balangay and of the Philippines that has been largely forgotten. It's underappreciated and relatively unknown to most Filipinos nowadays. So that they can be proud of that this is our heritage, this is our culture. Basically, we trained the cadets to um, be familiar with um, sailing and the principles of sailing. And then we do classroom instructions and we spend more time in the water. Since this is the first program and uh, the school adapted to have sailing as their subject, the cadets or the students are really um, enthusiastic about it because um, it's more related to their um, course compared to other sports. In the country, over a hundred maritime schools are in the business of training and producing seafarers. Philippines is one of the largest providers of maritime professionals in the world. Through our activities with sailing, we want to improve the quality of our maritime professionals. Because through sailing, it will enhance their seafaring capabilities. It will enhance their feel of the water, uh, how to read the waves, the winds, the tides. It will make them attuned to the natural forces around them, which they can still uh, apply, whether it's it's using a small dinghy or a big commercial vessel. 
For Renz and his fellow cadets, this access to sailing is a unique opportunity as the sport is usually seen as a domain for wealthier Filipinos. What I learned about sailing is that how we're going to, uh, to sail or to navigate the sailboats like how our sisters do sailing before, like how they control the ship you, you, used by the wind and the ocean. Like, kung, kung baga, kung baga, as a Filipino, like, as a Filipino, nasa dugo na ba nat, nato as a sailor. Just like how their ancestors left the safety of the shores to sail into the unknown, the program is empowering students like Renz to dream beyond their personal horizons. Nagmano na continuous pag trabaho din. Another business na pod ko like or mag instructor ba ko or kanin sailing kasi to sailing murag. Nakuha nakuha ako ng attention sa sailing mong god like anyo as a sailor mas nindot ni siya na murag i kumbaga ipaala ipa murag Ipa-remind bito sa mga bata pa nga, ingani, ingani ni Sauna, ingana ito mga ancestors, like, murag ipa-adapod sa ila ba nga, ato ni, we, we are born like this, ato ni Dugo. In 2015, the government declared the Balangay the National Boat of the Philippines. The aim is to ensure that future generations of Filipinos will recognize the contribution of their forefathers in shaping the country's maritime tradition. That's all the time we have for this week. I'm Barnaby Lowe. Thanks for watching. Join us again on Assignment Asia. Share your thoughts and contribute story ideas for future shows by contacting us on social media.